There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ2. It's about exponential modeling and average rate of change. Let's pretend it's from the 2003 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. A team of scientists began studying the population of white-tailed deer in a large wooded area in 2005. In 2007, t equals 2, there were 31 white-tailed deer in the wooded area. In 2020, t equals 15, there were 136 white-tailed deer. The number of white-tailed deer in the wooded area can be modeled by the function d, given by d of t equals a times b to the t power, where d of t is the number of white-tailed deer during year t, and t is the number of years since 2005. A Part 1 Use the given data to write two equations that can be used to find the values for constants a and b in the expression for d of t. Each input-output pair can be used to write an equation. At t equals 2, there were 31 white-tailed deer. For example, we can write the first equation by plugging the input value into the model for t and setting it equal to the output value. Similarly, at t equals 15, there were 136 white-tailed deer. That allows us to write the second equation a times b to the 15th power is equal to 136. And that's it for A part 1. A part 2. Find the values for A and B as decimal approximations. I'm going to show you how to do this two ways. First I'm going to show you how to do it by hand, and then I'll show you how to use the regression capabilities of your calculator to find A and B even more quickly. Looking at the blue equation, we can isolate the a value by dividing both sides by b squared. This gives us a is equal to 31 over b squared. We can substitute this expression in for a in the second equation. Substituting this expression for a gives us 31 over b squared times b to the 15th power is equal to 136. The two b's in the denominator will cancel out two of the b's in the numerator. That's going to leave behind 31 b to the 13th power is equal to 136. We can isolate b to the 13th power by dividing both sides by 31. That leaves b to the 13th power is equal to 136 over 31. We need to get b completely by itself. We can cancel out this 13 by raising both sides of the equation to the 1 over 13 power. So I'm going to raise this side to the 1 13th power and I will raise the right hand side to the 1 13th power. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply, and 13 times 1 over 13 is 1. So these cancel each other out, leaving simply b. This problem is calculator active, so let's substitute this expression into the calculator. Before you begin, always reset your calculator by hitting second plus 7, 1, 2. That's second plus 7, 1, 2. Now you have a fresh calculator. We're going to need some parentheses. Make a proper fraction by hitting alpha and x. And in the numerator, I believe we had 136 over 31. Close the parentheses. And we will raise this to the 1 over 13 power. So let's see, fraction again, 1 over 13. Kabam! Always use four decimal places and don't try to round. The College Board will accept three decimal places. However, students will often 
try to round to three decimal places, and they will round wrong and lose a point for no reason. So always use four decimal places and don't try to round. I want everyone to put B equals 1.1204. Go back to the calculator for a minute. If we need to use this value to find something else, even four decimal places is not enough to avoid a potential rounding error. So let's store this entire number into letter B on the calculator by hitting store and then alpha B enter. Now if we use the letter B, we will not lose any decimal accuracy. And that's what we need to do right now because we still need to find the value of A, which is 31 over B squared. We can type this into the calculator, including the B. So remember, 31 over B squared. So uh, let's hit alpha X, make that nice fraction, and we will do 31 over alpha B squared. Kabam! Remember, use four decimal places and do not try to round. So, 24.6925. That's it for A part two, and that's one method for finding the values of A and B. Now I'm going to show you how to find the value of A and B even faster using the regression capabilities of your calculator. The reason why I showed you the first method at all is because this is the method that always works. The only exponential model programmed into your calculator is a times b to the t power. Since that is the exact model we are given in this problem, we can use the regression capabilities of your calculator. However, they will often give you models that are slightly different, like a times b to the t minus one power, or a times b to the t over 2 power. If that is the case, you cannot use exponential regression, and you have to do it by hand the way I showed you in the first place. Back on the calculator, hit the stat button, and just hit enter for edit. We are going to enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. In other words, let's type in these two input-output pairs. Once you have the data typed in, hit the stat button, switch over to the calc menu, and scroll down to option zero, right after option nine, and you will find exponential regression. Next time you can just hit zero if you happen to remember it. Before you calculate the model, always tell the calculator to store the regression model as Y1, by coming to here and hitting alpha trace enter. Now hit enter two more times, enter, enter. And there it is, there's the value of A and the value of B. Notice that this matches exactly what we got when we did it mostly by hand. Also, if you hit the Y equals button, notice that the model D of T has been entered for us as Y1 including the values of A and B. If you did the problem by hand without using regression, you would have to type in the equation yourself. But first, you would have to store the value that we got for A into letter A, just like we did for letter B. So imagine that you just found the value of A. You would immediately hit the store button and then hit alpha A and enter. Now we have the value of A stored into letter A, and we have the full value of B stored into letter B. So we can go back to here, I'm going to clear this out, and we can simply type in A times B to the T power. So we will do alpha A, and then alpha B, all raised to the, and instead of T, we just always have to use X. So this is what you would have to do if uh, you did the problem mostly by hand instead of regression. B part one, use the given data to find the average rate of change in the number of white-tailed deer in deer per year from t equals two to t equals 15 years. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. Show the computations that lead to your answer. 
In general, the average rate of change of f of x on the interval from a to b is given by f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So, the average rate of change in the number of white-tailed deer on the interval from 2 to 15 is given by d of 15 minus d of 2 over 15 minus 2. You must show your setup. This is mandatory. In the setup, we were told that d at 15 is 136 and d at 2 is 31. Obviously, 15 minus 2 is 13, so now we have this. 136 minus 31 is 105. So this is the average rate of change. However, they asked us to express our answer as a decimal approximation. So let's type this into the calculator. 8.0769. Let's define this average rate of change as being equal to the letter C. That way, if we need to refer back to this value later in the problem, we can just use the letter C instead of writing out all of these numbers. Let's also store this value into the letter C on the calculator so we can use the letter C in our calculations as well. Just hit store and then alpha C enter. B part two. Use the average rate of change found in part one to estimate the number of white-tailed deer in the wooded area for t equals 19 years. Show the computations that lead to your answer. They are indirectly asking us to write the equation of the secant line through the two input-output pairs that we used to find the average rate of change in part one, and then use that secant line to estimate the number of white-tailed deer at t equals 19 years. We are going to use point slope form to find the equation of this secant line where t1 and y1 are one of the input output pairs that we use to find the average rate of change and m is the slope of the secant line which is the average rate of change. It's c. You can use either input output pair. I'm going to use 2 comma 31 because smaller numbers are usually easier to work with. So our point slope form becomes y minus 31 is equal to the slope and we can just write the letter c since we have defined c as being equal to the average rate of change. And then we have t minus t1. So that's going to be t minus 2. To use this equation to estimate the value at t equals 19, it's easier if we get y by itself by adding 31 to both sides. So we will have y equals c times t minus 2 plus 31. By the way, if you prefer to use a numerical value here instead of writing c, you can use 105 over 13 in this position. However, do not use a shortened form of the average rate of change. Even four decimal places is not enough. So either write 105 over 13 or use the value C that you have stored into the calculator and defined in part one. Our estimate for the number of white-tailed deer at t equals 19 years will be y at 19. So let's plug in 19 for t. That's c times 19 minus 2 plus 31. 19 minus 2 is 17. So y at 19 is equal to 17c plus 31. Let's enter this into the calculator for a decimal approximation. We can literally write 17c plus 31 by doing sub 17 times alpha c plus 31. And there it is, 168.3076. When I first recorded this video, I accidentally wrote 67 right here instead of 76. So please ignore that mistake when you see it on the screen later. I want to take an extra moment to explain what we just did. 
d of t, the population of white-tailed deer, is an exponential function of the form a times b to the t power. So we know it's a concave up increasing function passing through the input-output pairs that we were given. Then we found the equation of the secant line, y of t, passing through these input-output pairs. Then we used our secant line to estimate the number of white-tailed deer at t equals 19. That's four years past the t equals 15 that you see here. We estimated the number of white-tailed deer at t equals 19 years to be approximately 168. So that's what we just did. Drawing yourself a picture like this one will help you understand well enough to answer B part three. Consider the values that result from using the average rate of change found in part one to estimate the number of white-tailed deer in the wooded area for times T equals P years, where P is between two years and 15 years. Are these estimates less than or greater than the number of white-tailed deer predicted by model D at time T equals P years? Explain your reasoning using characteristics of the average rate of change and characteristics of the model D. When they say the values that result from using the average rate of change to estimate, they are referring to the values that we get when we use the secant line y of t to estimate values. When they ask if the estimates are less than or greater than the number of white-tailed deer predicted by the model d, they are asking if y of t is greater than d of t or less than d of t on the interval from 2 to 15. Looking back at the picture we drew, it's obvious that y of t is above d of t on the interval from 2 to 15. In other words, y of t is greater than d of t on this interval. The reason why is because y of t is linear while d of t is concave up. In general, if a function is concave up, the secant line will always be above the curve between the two intersection points. Begin by saying estimates are given by y of t the secant line of d of t through 2 comma 31 and 15 comma 136. Since y of t is linear while d of t is concave up, y of t is greater than d of t on the interval from 2 to 15. So the estimates are greater than the values predicted by d of t. Part c, for which t value, t equals eight years, or t equals 23 years, should the team of scientists have more confidence in when using model D? Give a reason for your answer in the context of the problem. The team of scientists should have more confidence in t equals eight, because t equals eight is within the interval of the data, which is the interval from two to 15. t equals 23 is outside this interval and we do not have any information about the change in deer population outside the interval from 2 to 15. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.